I don't know if you know this, Thor News is for winners, and that's why you're here. So stick around. Hit the button, baby. Stay cool. This is a Thor News presentation. Thor News presents Party Dance Time. Well, hot dang, y'all. They found a planet eight times the size of Jupiter, and it's orbiting a young star, which I guess implies that gas giants get smaller as they get older. Hey, just like humans, but different. The accepted theory has been nixed. Take that, a crushing disc. You were always shaky. For decades, conventional hive mind wisdom held that large Jupiter mass planets take a minimum of 10 million years to form. And if they form faster than that, they either got fined or arrested. Say it, Christopher John's crawl. Oh wow, crawl man. That movie was awesome when I was 11. The lead author of a new study about the planet C.I. Toby. C.I. C.I. Toby. All right. That will be published in the Astrophysical Journal. That has been called into question over the past decade, and many new ideas have been offered. But the bottom line is that we need to identify a number of newly formed planets around young stars if we hope to fully understand planet formation. Uh, I know our understanding of planet formation at this point seems pretty in contradiction to the long-standing idea that the larger planets take longer to form. U.S. astronomers today announced the discovery of a giant planet in close orbit around a star so young that it still retains a disk of circumstellar gas and dust. Uh, technically, doesn't Earth still have some type of a gas and dust ring? Or two, or four, or eight, depending on how far the Kuiper belt goes. See, Toby is at least eight times larger than Jupiter. I wonder if they named it Herculubus. Herculubus. Do the Herculubus. 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 Do the, do the, do, do the Herculubus. It's the new prepper dance craze. Sweeping the nation. Get on down. How low can you go? It's like the limbo, but different. Cytopia is at least eight times larger than Jupiter and orbits a two million year old star about 450 light years from Earth in constellation Taurus. Yay, Taurus. I'm so excited. That bull, that feisty bull, John's Kroll, and a dozen co authors from Rice, Lowell Observatory, and the University of Texas at Austin, NASA, and Northern Arizona University made the peer reviewed study available online this week. Wait, I forget. How do they know that the star is 2 million years old? Did they carbon date it? Or is it... Yeah, okay, wait. What is the whole process behind we know exactly how old stars are? Did you shoot your telescope at it and then get ID from the light rays? Excuse me, rays of light coming from that star. Can I please have your identification? Can I get your flying license? Because light flies? Wait, what does light do? It soars. Wait, light just beams? Yeah, okay. There you go. Crap. Screw the joke up. Excuse me. <laughs> light coming from that star. Can I please see your beaming license? Oh, man. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. The idea of dating stars as human beings, like, I understand that astronomers want to date stars. But at times, you just can't, bro. You know, unrequited math. Like, you proved to me in a court of law that the star is 2 million years old. Like, how do you know f for sure? I just think that's pretty, it's pretty crazy. Earth and the sun are more than 4 billion years old. And while the 33,000 plus catalog of exoplanets includes some older and some younger than Earth, the obstacle to finding planets around newly formed stars are varied and daunting. John's Crawl said, There are relatively few candidate stars that are young enough, bright enough, to view in sufficient detail with existing telescopes. Existing telescopes. Yeah, most of our telescopes are kind of old, and they're taking a long time to replace the Hubble. And keep your fingers crossed, maybe someday they'll put up new ones that are awesome. And still retain circumstellar disks of gas and dust from which planets form. Asterisk. Bullshit. <laughs> oh, that cough was weak. Stars so young are also active with visual outbursts and dimmings, strong magnetic fields, and enormous star spots that can make it appear that planets exist where they do not. Cetaw B orbits the star Cetaw once every nine days. Wow, dude. So it would only take you 90 days to be 10 years old. That's crazy. You better make the most of that life. Get busy living or get busy dying. Earth and the sun are more than 4 billion years old. Okay, in this whole accretion disk process, how long does it take the sun to spin out the planets? Can you tell me that? Cetabi orbits the star Cetau once every nine days. The planet was found. If you look at that top sentence by itself, it looks like some weird mumbo jumbo philosophy. Planets exist where they do not. Sensei. Variation. Oh god. The planet was found with the radial velocity method. A planet hunting technique that relies upon slight variations in the velocity of a star to determine the gravitational pull exerted by nearby planets that are too faint to observe directly with a telescope. The discovery resulted from a survey begun in 2004 of 140 candidate stars in the star-forming region Torres Arriga, 
This result is unique because it demonstrates that a giant planet can form so rapidly that the remnant gas and dust from which the young star formed surrounding the system in a frisbee-like disk is still present. I wonder what percentage of astronomers are frisbee golfers. I would think the number would be higher out of Austin than most other places. Giant planet formation in the inner part of the disk where Citabi is located will have a profound impact on the region where smaller terrestrial planets are also potentially forming. The team observed Sata dozens of times from the University of Texas at Austin's McDonald Observatory near Fort Davis, Texas. Yeah, I thought about having a Thor hang out there maybe sometime in September, October. Supposedly the darkest place in America to see the stars. It's supposedly wonderful. And they got a bunch of great stuff around there like underground crystal caverns and stuff. I don't know, I dream a lot. Initial optical radio velocity data from McDonald Observatory confirmed that a planet might be present, and the team added photometry measurements from Lowell and five years of infrared observations from Hawaii, Kitt Peak, and McDonald to rule out the possibility that the optical signal resulted from star spots or another masking phenomenon. John Skrull said the team has examined about half of the young stars in Taurus Auriga survey sample, and the data from several of these suggest that more planets may be found. Ours isn't the only group looking for planets around young stars, and my hope is that astronomers can find enough of them to shed light on some of the nagging questions about planet formation, John Skrull said. For instance, the brown dwarf desert, an unexplained paucity of objects that are larger than giant planets but smaller than stars. What? If close investigation of young stars reveal more brown dwarfs in short periods orbits than elsewhere, that could confirm the theory that they tend to merge with their central stars within a few million years of forming. Okay, so like, let's say that Jupiter is the sun's brown dwarf. They're saying that Jupiter would then form with the sun to create another superstar. That is great. That is wonderful science. Um, so yeah. Fear Jupiter! No, don't. Jupiter's cool, man. Uh, maybe one of the other planets will pop and grow like a bloom or something. I don't know. Man, I'm off my game today. What the hell? Thor's Day and everything. It's a strange day, though. Okay, peace out. So I'll let y'all know that find Herculubus, asterisk, lol. What?